All right, welcome back to another installment of Math Basics with Mr. Besh. Today we're going to look at dividing rational numbers. In this video, I have two examples for you, one basic and straightforward, and another uh, example that has a, um, some mixed values, uh, a little bit more complicated but not difficult at all. When you divide rational numbers, remember, rational numbers is just a fancy way of saying fraction. When you divide rational numbers, what you want to do is you want to take your problem and rewrite it. You're going to rewrite the problem by doing the following. The first fraction you keep exactly the same, so it'll stay 3 over 5. Then what you want to do is change the division symbol in between the two fractions into a multiplication symbol. Last but not least, you want to take the second fraction and flip it upside down. The bottom number becomes the top, the top becomes the bottom. This is referred to as the reciprocal. What you just did was you made it into a multiplication problem. And to solve this is pretty basic. You take the top times the top, or numerator times numerator, to get you 30. And then 5 times 9 is going to give me 45. Now you're not done. Because anytime you're dealing with fractions, you've got to make sure your fractions are in the lowest terms. To do this, you take 30 over 45 and think of the largest number that goes into them both. You're looking for the greatest common factor. And the greatest common factor of 30 and 45 is 15. 30 divided by 15 is 2, 45 divided by 15 makes 3, and my final answer is 2 over 3 or 2 thirds. Now I want to show you a technique that I prefer. The technique I prefer is referred to as cross canceling. And what you're going to do is this. You're going to take your two fractions as we have, just like this, and you're going to take a look at the numbers that are diagonally across from one another. If you notice a factor that goes into both of them before you multiply, you can divide both of those values by that term. I got 3 and 9. So if I divide them both by 3, 3 divided by 3 makes 1, 9 divided by 3 makes 3. And vice versa, on the other side here, you got 10 and 5 on this diagonal. You notice that 5 goes into both of them. So 5 divided by 5 gives you 1. 10 divided by 5 gives you 2. Now my fraction is not 3 over 5, it's 1 over 1. And now over here it's not 10 over 9, it's 2 over 3. And then top times top gives us 2. And then bottom times bottom gives us 3. And we're done again. What happens is, if you notice using the cross-canceling technique, you're actually reducing before you multiply. This makes it a lot easier when your fractions get bigger in numbers. So that was, that was two ways, and, and like I said, either way, either preference you have is fine. You're still going to get the right answer. This cross-canceling technique, however, just helps you when the numbers get a little bit larger. My second example is when there are mixed terms. Mixed terms are fractions in which have whole values in front. This one has a 2 in front, and this one has a 1 in front. The first thing you need to do, and this is imperative, you got to make your improper, your, your mixed fractions improper. And you do this by taking the number out front, times the bottom, and then you add it to the top. So your fraction 2 and 1 fourth becomes 2 times 4 makes 8, 8 plus 1 makes 9, so 9 over 4. You got to do this to the second fraction as well. 1 times 16 gives you 16. 16 added to the top gives you 27. So then you're going to have 27 over 16. Once you've done this, then you repeat the steps like we did above. First thing you're going to do is you're going to rewrite your fractions. You're going to take the division symbol and you're going to change it into a multiplication symbol. You're going to take your second fraction and flip it upside down using the reciprocal. So no longer will you use 27 over 16. You're going to use 16 over 27. Multiplying the top times the top. 9 times 16 gives us 144. 4 times 27 gives us 108. Now notice the numbers start getting a little bit bigger. And this is where I would prefer to do cross-canceling, but I'll show you that in a second. Once you have this fraction, which is 144 over 108, you want to take it and put it in the lowest terms. To do this, when your top number is bigger than your bottom, what you have is an improper fraction. What you do is you ask yourself, how many times does the bottom go into the top? Or you could do a little bit of long division. 108 goes into 144 one time. And what's left over is called my remainder. And the remainder is what goes on the top of the fraction. Notice the bottom of the fraction stays exactly the same. Now one other thing that you want to notice is anytime you have a fraction with an even number on the top and on the bottom, you know you can keep dividing by 2. But then ask yourself, is there a bigger number that goes into both of these, a greatest common factor? And the answer is yes. 
The biggest number, believe it or not, that goes into 36 and 108 is 36. 36 divided by 36 gives you 1, and 108 divided by 36 gives you 3. So my answer, in lowest terms, is 1 and 1 third. Now watch how much easier this would be cross-multiplying. Looking at 9 and 27, I know 9 goes into both of them. So 9 divided by 9 gives us 1. 27 divided by 9 gives us 3. And then these diagonals, 4 and 16, I know 4 goes into both of those. 4 divided by 4 gives me 1. 16 divided by 4 gives me 4. Now I take the top times the top. 1 times 4 gives me 4. And then the bottom times the bottom. 1 times 3 gives me 3. And look at this guy, an improper fraction. 3 goes into 4 one time. What's left over? 1. And again, I'm back with my same answer, 1 and 1 third. And this is dividing of rational numbers. I hope you found this both helpful and informative.